So uh, Charles Wynn with TGS, and I'll let Yuri and Ben introduce themselves. Hi, everybody. My name is Yuri Gubanov. I'm the Partner Solution Architect for Energy at Amazon Web Services, and I focus primarily on energy data platforms, including Energy Data Insights and the OSDU Data Platform. Hi, my name is Ben Greer. I work with 47 Lining Hitachi Digital Services, and I've been involved with the OSDU and SDU for about five and a half years. So we're going to talk about seismic streaming and practice with EDS. So um, give a quick introduction, um, talk about kind of the seismic streaming, kind of the landscape, and then uh, we'll give a solution overview, a um, couple of videos, hopefully they, they work, and then, um, and then we'll just talk about some challenges and things that we did um, to resolve some of those, and then um, next steps. Okay. So, um, First thing I want to talk about is uh, external data sources or external data services. It's, it's, uh, it's EDS, and I guess Ben and I were just having a conversation about, you know, is it services or, or sources? I guess uh, SOB also has an EDS, so, you know, w you know we know that we're technical people because there's lots of acronyms now, right? So, um, but basically, we're using external data services, you know, EDS, to um, do the connections, right? The cool thing about uh, EDS is that it was graduated now in December. Um, and the services that are available are basically the DMS service, the fetch and ingest service, and the scheduler service. So, right, so those are now available, um, kind of, and what graduated means is that it's out of incubation or kind of the, the testing stage, so it, it's available for use, okay? Um, and then uh, TGS, as a, as a vendor, has implemented EDS using what we call wrappers, okay? So what a wrapper is, is it allows the vendor to use their existing systems, but still connect to OSDU via APIs, right, using you know, this, you know, this EDS. So if you look at the diagram here, there's vendor one and vendor two, you know, they've both implemented EDS wrappers, and that allows us to communicate you know, and participate in OSDU without having full-blown OSDU implementations in our backend, okay? So, um, and on you know, kind of the box, there are all the different services that are available. So, the two wrapper implementations that I have been involved with are TGS Dataverse. So, Dataverse is uh, TGS's uh, data management as a service platform. Um, so, it allows you to basically, you know, um, host your multi-client and proprietary um, seismic well data into, you know, in our kind of uh, data lakes, and um, and then you know expose services to you in order to um, use those services and. Um, and then the other implementation that we've been involved with is Versal. So Versal is a uh, collaboration between CEG, PGS, and TGS, and it's basically a seismic ecosystem. Um, so both of those have implemented EDS wrappers to allow you to communicate with our services, um, you know, with your OSDU. Okay. Um, on the streaming perspective, uh, I want to talk a little bit about MDIO. So MDIO is a um, cloud-native uh, storage format for energy data. And, um, and, and basically, it came about from our internal people within TGS, our data scientists. They were looking for um, a faster, better way, easier way to do machine learning workflows you know, from seismic data, right? So they tried all the different implementations out there and really didn't find anything that was easy to use you know, from Python, um, that was performant enough and w was really cloud native. So they basically, in a Scarpworks lab, built MDIO, and uh, and we've been using it now internally at TGS uh, for for quite a while now for a lot of our internal workflows, whether it's machine learning, ETLs, and HPC workflows. Um, uh, the cool thing about it is that we are now working on um, implementing MDIO within OSDU. Uh, we've implemented um, with some partners. Uh, Basically, the, the DMS uh, with SDAPI, SDUtils, and the conversion DAGs. And um, the donation to OSDU is in progress as we speak. Okay? And with that, I'll hand this over to Yuri. Okay. Thank you, Charles. So we've used Energy Data Insights for OSDU Data Platform on AWS to model and simulate the workflow for the seismic um, streaming. Energy Data Insights have been mentioned already a couple of times, so I'll just hit a few key points. So with Energy Data Insights, we'll bring AWS customer obsession to the enterprise. There are a lot of features that uh, James Patton highlighted of EDI. I picked my top three just to kind of share and reiterate that. So EDI is a fully managed platform which can be deployed as a platform as a service or software as a service. 
And we've also heard from our customers that ingesting data into the OSD platform can be sometimes uh, tricky and time consuming. So we have developed Energy Data Insights IQ to speed up that ingestion process using the AI, NML, and generative AI technologies. And in our testing, it showed that it could be, the ingestion could be done up to 90% faster than other alternatives. We also heard from our customers that making applications OSD compatible can be time consuming as well. So we developed EDI Transformer that could speed up your journey for OSD and aware applications to make them OSD compatible. I think it's also worth highlighting that those different services of EDI can be used separately to combine the solutions for uh, each individual customer. You can use EDI Pass or SAS, you can add EDI IQ when you're doing petabyte scale ingestion, and you can use EDI Transformer when you need to m work with OSD on aware applications. When you don't need some of the features, you can turn them off, go back to your um, core EDI platform, which is essentially your core OSDU and uh, DDMS services that we're all familiar with. So for this seismic data streaming use case, we took three components, OSDU external data sources, TGS Dataverse library, and MDIO format. Together with EDI solution for the managed OSDU data platform offering, and combine it to make the seismic streaming in MDO format possible. We use the OSDU external data sources to discover and visualize and process the seismic data. And the real benefit here for the operators is you can connect to your external seismic repositories using EDS without copying the data back. So that avoids the data duplications that um, we sometimes struggle with. And it all can be done without extensive coding. And to demonstrate that, I'll turn it over to Ben for the solution overview and the demo. Thanks, Siri. So yeah, let's look in a little more detail at what we built. So here we'll find an overview of our solution. On the left side, we have the TGS Dataverse, which is going to be providing our MDIO seismic data. And then on the right side, we see the Energy Data Insights OSDU platform, uh, along with a map viewer and MDIO client demo application. Uh, some key components here are highlighted on the Dataverse side. We have to implement those endpoints for the search and storage so that the EDS fetch and ingest process is able to retrieve uh, both the metadata and the actual seismic retrieval instructions. And then we also have the MDIO streaming endpoint that'll be used for actually streaming and, and visualizing the seismic data. And then on the EDI side and inside OSDU, we're gonna be of course making use of the EDS capability to bring in this external metadata. And then that will be kicking off the workflow service to uh, bring in that manifest. It goes into storage and then through indexer into the search service so that a user can find it through the normal search and map viewer capabilities on the platform. And uh, to zoom in a little more on the EDS provider side, we have these three endpoints. Uh, we have the search query with cursor endpoint, which is used during the EDS fetch and ingest process. Uh, the request to it looks very similar to the OSDU search endpoint. The response uh, looks kind of similar as well. It'll be a list of results that allow the EDS fetch and ingest workflow to build a manifest that'll be successfully ingested into the data platform as metadata. And then we have the storage retrieval instructions endpoint, which is used when a geoscientist wants to get the retrieval instructions for the actual seismic data. And then we have the streaming endpoint, which is used uh, once someone has retrieved the retrieval instructions, they're able to interact with the streaming endpoint to actually get the seismic data. And then on the OSDU data platform side in, in EDI, we of course have the EDS workflow storage index and search services working together to bring in that metadata and make it part of the data platform along with all of the existing OSDU resources that could have been ingested through the normal ingestion workflows or, or another mechanism. And then we have a number of integrated applications that allow users to not only interact with the OSDU platform APIs, but have some user interface. So exam for examples include the EDI management console, the map viewer that we'll see today, as well as the MDIO client app, and then other integrated geoscience applications. So let's see it in practice. So the first step of setting up this integration is to configure your external data provider, and you have to implement those APIs that I referred to. So what we're gonna see here is uh, we have a Jupyter Notebook that we used to validate the functionality of those APIs. So we're going to make the request to the API in the same way that the EDS fetch and ingest process will. And then we're gonna make sure that the response matches what we expect it to be, which will be a, a list of results containing manifests. Here uh, in this demo, we're gonna be working with seismic acquisition survey and seismic trace data resources. 
So we're gonna be validating that the queries for both of those work correctly. And yep, here we see the seismic trace data coming through and we can see that we get back our seismic trace data resource and it has all of the associated metadata that we'll then be ingesting into the OSDU. And then our last piece is to validate that the retrieval instruction endpoint works correctly. So using the seismic acquisition survey work product component dataset property, we get the dataset ID and then use that ID to request the retrieval instructions. And then we get back the retrieval information for streaming that actual seismic data. So once you have your EDS provider side implemented, uh, you have to configure the OSDU EDS capability to make use of it. So for seismic acquisition survey and seismic trace data, you have to create uh, two connected source data jobs and then one connected source registry entry that describes how to communicate with that external data source. Uh, your connected source registry entry has information such as the security information on how you'll uh, securely communicate with those external APIs and it also has the API endpoint information like where you'd actually find them. And then in the data jobs, you will set up the information about what type of resources you're fetching. So in this case, we have the seismic trace data resource and that includes the, the filter by kind and uh, an optional query string filter if you wanted to further reduce the amount of data retrieved. And then we have the same thing for our seismic trace data uh, which will be a, a, another connected source data job that just is looking for the seismic trace, data, seismic trace data kind instead of seismic acquisition service. So once you've created those three uh, master data records, the EDS fetch and ingest process will automatically execute uh, at the interval that is described in your data job and here we can see the seismic acquisition survey, fetch and ingest process running. Uh, it goes through the, the query of that external data provider, retrieving that metadata, building a manifest, and then kicking off the OSDU ingestion workflow for that manifest to successfully bring the metadata into the data platform. Here we can see that happening here. We see the, the manifest being sent over to the OSDU ingestion workflow, and uh, we can see that all of the steps of the workflow completed successfully and the record made it into the data platform. And then we'll see the same thing for the seismic trace data resource. The EDS fetch and ingest process will execute at the specified interval. It will fetch the metadata from our external data provider, build the manifest and uh, put it into the system using the OSDU ingestion workflow. Cool, so once you've successfully fetched and ingested your metadata, you can make, uh, you can interact with it through any of the normal OSDU APIs and any of the integrated web applications. Here we see an example of using the EDI map viewer to look at our seismic acquisition survey. Uh, we see the pin for it and then uh, we have a uh, capability to click for viewing the full metadata, which takes you to the search view for that specific record. And you can view all the metadata that we ingested. And uh, an important note here is uh, an easy way to tell uh, records that have been fetched and ingested through EDS for, from records that have made it in through other mechanisms is that the data set property will be replaced with a connected data set that, that references that external source. Cool. So then uh, once a geoscientist has found a resource that they want to work with, uh, maybe they want to do some visualization or interpretation with it, we can use a MDIO enabled application to stream that, uh, stream that data and visualize it. So here we're going, uh, this is a demo streamlet application that goes through the same workflow that any web app could. We're going to be authenticating the user. We're gonna query for our seismic trace data resource. And then we're going to select the data set associated with that seismic trace data resource, request the retrieval instructions which we can see here. And then we're going to use that URI for streaming the data set to do it. And here we have an example of uh, an inline slice and we'll see a, 
the next slime slice coming up. And an important thing to note here is the edges, the, the gray areas you see on the side of the data are not necessarily the edge of the data set, but the edge of what this particular user is entitled to view, and that's being enforced on the EDS provider side when they're streaming that data. Here we see the, the data is you know, updating as we change the depth or, or X line that we might want to be visualizing. All right, so uh, when going through this integration, um, we managed the, the process something like this. So we had a number of milestones that we identified where we were able to track progress and celebrate them. Uh, first was, of course, setting up our EDI OSDU environment. Uh, that only takes a, a couple hours, and then we're able to onboard everyone and begin configuring uh, EDS and ingesting the metadata. Um, we spent a significant amount of time actually uh, spiking and then implementing the EDS provider pieces to make sure that the construction of that manifest was successful and that the OSU ingestion workflow would complete successfully and, and bring in all of the metadata. Um, once we had that, we were able to repeatedly configure OSDU EDS to have those connected source data jobs and the connected source registry entry. And um, we were able to uh, demonstrate this in both the M18 and M20 OSDU deployments. Uh, we use Jupyter Notebooks as the way to do that. Um, so then once we had the successful EDS fetch and ingest uh, running, we had the metadata in the data platform and were able to go through uh, the user flows of being able to discover and, and visualize that data and then do the streaming from our TGS Dataverse using that metadata. And during this integration, we did encounter a few hurdles, and I think they fall into these kinds of categories, um, these three categories. One of them being that we're early on in adopting the OSDU EDS capabilities and, and making real use of them. So we encountered some quirks in, in the way things are configured and, and set up. Um, we encountered uh, a limited visibility into the EDS fetch and ingest and OSDU ingestion failure modes. Um, the, the amount of logging present uh, is minimal, and the ability for a normal user to find it uh, is difficult as well. And, and that's not just on the EDS uh, service. I think that's across many of the core data, uh, core data services and, and core services of the OSD data platform. And then um, we also had an, a lot of iteration on the EDS provider search endpoint definition to make sure that we were responding in a way that the EDS fetch and ingest process could build a, a manifest that made it all the way through the OSDU ingestion workflow. But luckily, through all these hurdles, we had the OSDU EDS working group available to ask questions and raise and resolve a lot of these issues. And, and that worked really well. We had a really good pattern of being able to work with the pre-shipping team and the EDS team and uh, duplicate any of the issues we were seeing or, or any questions in the pre-shipping environments and then get those through. Many things, are, many things that we encountered are going to be fixed in the upcoming M23 releases and future ones. And uh, we'll be able to share a little bit more about that in the session later today at two. So then in conclusion, uh, we were able to demonstrate using the OSDU EDS capabilities to take externally located licensed data and make it available to a geoscientist user of the EDI OSDU data platform as if it were metadata along with all of the other records in the platform. Um, we would like to continue integrating more service vendors and make it easy to consume this data through streaming APIs via the EDS capabilities. And we'd like to continue maturing the EDS features and, and make that easier for everyone to use. So uh, EDS is officially graduated in our upcoming OSDU release, and we'd love to connect with you on how we can integrate your external data with the OSDU data platform. So thank you so much, and I think we have a few minutes for questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to put a, uh, a shout out to the EDS working group. You know, they're, you guys rock it, Ashish and, uh, and Abbasis, you know what I mean? Super helpful um, and really helped us get this thing moving along. So I just want to give a call out to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Questions? 
Hello. Um, I was going to ask, uh, from the time frame that y'all first started working with EDS, how long did it take to implement? And also, at what point of its maturity did y'all start to engage with it on Experimental Incubator? Um, thank you. How long? I think we were about 10 weeks, uh, the, the timeline that we shared. It was right around there. Um, you know, some of that was us collaborating and, and how we're going to accomplish the integration and then actually doing the work. Yeah, and I think it also helped that uh, TGS already had experience with EDS. So building the overall solution, we kind of were able to speed up because TGS already uh, played with the uh, EDS implementation. And what was the, the second part of the question again? What was the, what was the second? Ah, so uh, we knew it was going to be graduated, or, or like it was uh, EDS was approaching graduation, and, and I think that's that, that was something that gave us some confidence in the capabilities. Yeah, I think it graduated right after we kind of finished, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Thank you for that presentation. I just wanted to ask: Are you aware of any companies that are trying to connect? their internal data stores via EDS or any other vendors who are planning to use EDS just from your general knowledge being in the EDS work groups and stuff? I'm in trouble hearing the question. Yeah. Do you know of other vendors or operators who are using EDS today? Other vendors? Yeah. Uh, the question was, do we know other vendors or operators who are using EDS today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. so we, uh, we have connected to, to some operators. Um, and other vendors, so uh, there's Catalyst, that's, that, that's currently on right now. Uh, I, I think T, you know, TGS, and then there's also Verso, which is a collaboration between CEG and PGS. So those are the ones that are currently, uh, you know, kind of the early adopters of, uh, of EDS. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.